Hi, it's Katrina. From homely old women who forewarn of impending doom, to monsters that flood villages and mermaids who lure foolish men to their untimely ends, here are 10 creatures from Welsh mythology. These names were extremely difficult to pronounce, but I will try my best. Number 10. Hlamigan Idor. The Hlamigan Idor, known as the Water Leaper, is a malicious creature that dwells in swamps, ponds, rivers, and lakes. It resembles a gigantic toad like creature with bat wings in place of its forelegs and a serpent's tail with a stinger at the end. The creature prefers to travel by jumping and gliding across the water with the help of its wings, ergo the name Water Leaper. Its appearance alone is rumored to cause people to drop dead. But when that fails, the water leaper relies on its venomous stinger or its blood-curdling screech to terrify the living daylights out of its victims and stun its prey. Man, that's what would get me. I hate screeching. The water leaper will eat livestock and people that wander too close to the water's edge. If it gobbles up a sheep, the only thing left will be the fleece, found downstream several days later. It is also accused of snapping people's fishing lines or running away with the hook, dragging the fishermen to their watery depths, and of course devouring them afterward. Only the hat and boots floating on the river remain of the man that once was. Shepherds know to keep their sheep and dogs away from the water's edge. It is quite the pest among fishing communities, so beware of the water leaper. Number 9. Adar Luch Gwyn. The Adar Luch Gwyn are large, magical birds similar to the legendary griffin, whose name derives from Welsh words meaning dust and wine, or powdered wine, which might come from the color of the animal, or maybe, as they say, the condition of the storyteller. They have the body of a lion and the head and wings of an eagle, and, according to some depictions, a long, snake-like tail. They are obedient to a fault. According to a 17th century story, a fairy gifted the Adar Luchguin to her warrior husband named Drudvas Ab Trifin. They understand human speech and obey all their master's commands, but these abilities do not make them immune to error, as one fatal mix-up proved. One day, as Drudvas prepared to battle the hero Arthur, he instructed his birds to kill the first man that entered the battlefield. It was, of course, meant to be Arthur, but he was delayed by Drudvas' sister. Arthur was late, making Drudvas the first to enter, and the creatures viciously tore their master to shreds. Legend has it that they were remorseful, letting out a pitiful wail upon realizing that they'd killed the wrong man. While they are intelligent, they are condemned to servitude and obedience, making them good spiritual companions. The term Adar Luch Gwyn grew to encompass various types of raptors in medieval Welsh poetry, including hawks and falcons. It was also a metaphor for brave, strong men. Number 8. Tullith Teg Tullith Teg is the most commonly used Welsh term for the fairy folk, which are blonde, blue-eyed, human-like creatures who dwell primarily underground and in rivers and streams. While they are traditionally considered beautiful, some myths describe fairy folk as short and homely. In fact, there are five types of Tullith Teg, according to folklorist Wart Sykes, including elves, fairies of the mines, household fairies, female fairies of lakes and streams, and hag-like mountain fairies. So they can all look a bit different. Fairy folk maidens are known to marry human men, but are still bound by the rules of their species, which includes being banished back to their realm and never seeing their husbands again if they touch iron. Kind of like Maleficent, remember? Her weakness was iron, and just the slightest touch would burn her skin. The fairy folk give gifts to people they like, but their generosity is conditional. If someone speaks aloud about a gift they received from a fairy, the gift vanishes. If you speak kindly of fairies, you are more likely to be in their good graces, but if you speak badly, they can get extremely angry. They are very mischievous and love golden-haired human children, and will often kidnap them, leaving changelings in their place. This child looks exactly the same as a human infant, but soon will grow sickly, ugly, and start to shrivel. During medieval times, there are many examples of changelings which help people to explain why some children had unexplained diseases or developmental disorders. It was because the fairies had stolen their real baby and left a fairy child in its place, so families would often take them back to the woods and abandon them there. 
As they ride their horses in a procession, the Tulith Teg visit the homes of people who leave bowls of milk outside for them, and apparently they really like goats and will comb their hair so they look their best on Sundays. Number 7. The Koblenai The Koblenai, or the Koblenau, are one of the five types of Tulith Teg. These fairy of the mines are gnome-like creatures who guide miners to rich veins of ore in Wales and at Welsh settlements in North America by using a peculiar knocking sound. They dress in miniature mining uniforms and work tirelessly, but never complete their tasks. They are considered ugly and small, reaching up to one and a half feet tall at the most. What they lack in appearances and height, the Kobanau make up for with their friendly and helpful personalities. While they are willing to lead miners toward unharvested natural resources, these creatures are less generous when it comes to their own wares. They are rumored to love metal more than air and require great promises in exchange for one of their swords or pieces of jewelry. Their presence, however, brings good luck in mines and quarries, so miners are good to them as they hammer away, loading buckets and work busily, but at the end of the day, they accomplish nothing. This video was requested by Trevor via Instagram at Morans1995, who enjoyed the video on Scottish mythology and asked me to travel a bit more south to Wales, of course. And also by C and Owen on YouTube, who is a huge mythology buff. Big shout out to both of you. If you want to come over and say hello and leave me your video recommendations, be sure to come follow me on Instagram at Katrina Explained. Number 6. The Avonk also known as a donk, the Avonk is a demonic lake monster variously described as resembling a crocodile, beaver, or dwarf-like creature, depending on the story. Some believe it's the Welsh equivalent of the Scottish Loch Ness Monster. Like most water demons, the Avonk preys on anyone foolish enough to enter the lake it lives in, whether deliberately or by falling in, and it seems invincible against man-made weapons. Its hide was so thick no arrow or spear could pierce it. It's been blamed for causing terrible floods along the Conwy River that ruin people's crops and drown their livestock, courtesy of the creature's short temper. The wise men of the valley came together to see what they could do about the beast. They decided to try to capture the creature and relocate it to another lake. The Avonk, like many other large, scary creatures, was very partial to beautiful young women. A young maiden volunteered to charm the monster and went to the shore to call softly to it. The monster reared its ugly head as she sung him a lullaby, and the Avant crawled out of the lake and fell asleep on her lap. The men jumped out from where they had been hiding and bound the monster in iron chains. The Avant awoke and with a roar of fury it thrashed about, killing the maiden. But thanks to her bravery and with the help of two very powerful oxen, the townspeople were able to relocate it to its new home, under the dark, imposing shadow of Mount Snowdon, where he remains trapped. According to another story, the Adonk lives in a cave near the Palace of the Sons of the King of the Tortures. It is a vicious cycle of death and despair, where the king's three sons are killed by the monster each day, only for maidens of the court to resurrect them every time. The monster is finally slayed by Peridor, a knight from King Arthur legend. Number 5. Gwishki Also called the Dog of Darkness or the Black Hound of Destiny, the Gwishki or Gwishki is a huge, terrifying canine that appears as a black wolf or a mastiff with bright red eyes, shaggy fur, and pungent breath. It roams dark, lonely streets on the outskirts of villages at night, particularly in northeast Wales. In some accounts, the Gwishki slowly and silently stalks travelers before pouncing on them and attacking. Sometimes, however, the fearsome dog vanishes after being spotted or is merely considered a sign of bad luck. The Gwishki was first mentioned in a rare 1839 book titled The Vale of Glamorgan. According to legend, anyone who makes eye contact with it instantly becomes paralyzed, and its howl also sometimes causes people to stiffen with fear. Reported sightings of the Gwishki continue to this day. Number 4. Morgan Morrigans are eternally youthful, diabolical female water spirits who drown unsuspecting men by luring them into the water with their beauty or with visions of scenic underwater gardens containing crystal and gold buildings. People also blame Morrigans for causing heavy flooding that destroys crops and villages. When they're not busy targeting foolish males or causing destruction, these cruel maidens sit in the water seductively combing their hair. In some tales, fishermen adopt Morgans as infants, only for them to return to their underwater dwellings and original families upon reaching adulthood. 
Other stories tell of mortal women becoming Morgans. One king's daughter, a mischief maker and magician named Princess Dahut, stole her father's key to the local dam while he was drunk, causing the floodgates to burst open and wipe out the kingdom. Dahut's father awoke and tried to save her, but was no match against the powerful oncoming waves. As the forceful current carried Dahut out to sea, she transformed into a Morgan. Number 3. Kefal Dur Kefal Dur is a water horse and shapeshifter with flying abilities who inhabits various water bodies, including the seaside and mountain pools, while favoring waterfalls the most. Despite appearing solid, he can quickly dissipate into mist and can assume other forms, including a frog and, in some cases, a human. He is depicted more favorably in some regions than others. In northern Wales, for example, Kefal Dur is a formidable, scary creature with a dark presence and fiery eyes. According to some stories, he leaps from waterfalls and kills solitary travelers. Other tales claim that he convinces unsuspecting travelers to ride him and evaporates into mist from high in the air, dropping the rider to their death below. On the other hand, in South Wales, he's merely a harmless prankster and a pest to travelers at worst. Author Marie Trevelyan described this friendlier version of the beast in her 1973 book Folklore and Folk Tales of Wales as luminous, fascinating, and sometimes a winged steed. In one story, the Kefaldur convinces a traveler to ride him and evaporates into mist while flying high in the air. But instead of plunging the rider to their death, he pulls the stunt more or less in good fun, and the traveler is rescued. The most common feature of various Kefaldur descriptions is the creature's backwards hooves. Number 2. Draig E Draig, or the Red Dragon, symbolizes all things Welsh and appears on the flag of Wales, which is rumored to be the world's oldest flag representing a united country. It's commonly depicted standing on one foot against a green and white background, although there are variations of the dragon's image, as it's a centuries-old symbol that has changed over time. The history of the red dragon symbolism in the region goes back at least as far as the 4th century, with reports of Roman British soldiers entering battle with banners featuring the creature. During the 5th century, after the Romans withdrew from Britain, the Welsh kings of Aberfra are said to have used the red dragon to symbolize their power and authority, while written records of the red dragon's use in Welsh culture date back to the year 820. British cleric and historiographer Geoffrey of Monmouth linked the Red Dragon to Arthurian legends in his Historia Regum Britanniae, written between 1120 and 1129. He also discussed a long-standing battle between a Red Dragon, which represented the Welsh, and a White Dragon, which symbolized the English. Number 1. Cahorais the Cahorais is similar to the Irish Banshee. It's a ghastly spirit who is never seen but has plenty heard, warning people of impending deaths with an eerie disembodied moan. This unbearable groaning is said to resemble the suffering of someone who's tragically ill and repeats three times to caution others that a person will soon meet their end, with each cry successively growing weaker. The alarming noise also sounds before a shipwreck or before a Welsh native passes away far from home. The Cahorais is often connected with tales of the Graki Ribbon, also called the Hag of the Mist, which is easier to pronounce, and is a spirit that takes the form of a half-human, half-bird resembling a hideous old woman. She warns people of their upcoming demise by flying up to their window and calling their name, or by crying out when the person approaches an intersection or a stream, where she is often invisible, but is sometimes seen washing her hands. Thanks for watching! I would love to visit Wales! If you are from there or have been there, do you have any recommendations for me? Let me know in the comments below! And also, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!